Go inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. Tider Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. All right, everybody, welcome in to Tider Insider TV. It is the longest running sports broadcast show in Tuscaloosa, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Visit Tuscaloosa alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm WVUA 23 Sports Director Gary Harris. And, Rodney, we're going to start with basketball. Listen, football's always big. You know that. But right now, there's no bigger story in Tuscaloosa than this Alabama men's basketball team and a chance to, to keep it going. Mark Sears carried Alabama long enough for the Crimson Tide to get an unexpected contribution from Mo Diabate and reached the Sweet 16 on Sunday night. Sears had 26 points, 12 rebounds, and 6 assists. But it was Diabate that scored all nine of his points in the final five and a half minutes. And fourth seed Alabama used a late surge to beat number 12 seed Grand Canyon 72-61 in the second round of the NCAA tournament in Spokane, Washington on Sunday evening. Alabama held an opponent under 65 points for just the second time this season. Sears carried the Crimson Tide for really about 35 minutes. Until it was Diabati time, the 6'7 freshman made the most of his chance to contribute in the final minutes of a physical game with nine points and five rebounds in the tide without injured starter Latrell Reichel Jr., who suffered another head injury in the first half. All right, Rodney, Alabama advances to the Sweet 16 for the third time in the last four years, back-to-back -back years for the first time since Wimp was the coach here. But obviously the goal, even though now Alabama becomes the underdog instead of the favorite, is to keep advancing. They're going to get number one North Carolina on third. Thursday night out in Los Angeles. But first, let's talk about these two wins they had up in Spokane over Charleston, who a lot of people had Alabama on upset watch against, and then against Grand Canyon, who, quite frankly, a lot of the national pennants flat out picked Alabama to, to lose the game, including every one of the guys that uh, were on the pregame show, Clark Kellogg, Kenny Smith, and Charles Barkley, all picked Alabama to lose. And then the Tide goes out and wins the kind of game that they have had trouble in this year, a physical, lower-scoring type game. I really thought they showed some toughness and grit. Yeah, I thought they played pretty good defense, too, against Charleston, Gary. I really did. I thought it was one of the, maybe one of their better defensive performances until towards the end. That's right, yeah. Uh, you know, but Alabama puts up 109 points in that game. Really good start, obviously. And then you talk about this last game against Grand Canyon. I mean, you know, like you said, you have to find different ways to win games. Sears was fantastic in both games. He had 30 and 26. We, so he did a fantastic job. And Alabama found ways to win this game, Gary. Uh, when things got tough, guys stepped up. They got rebounds. They put up second shots, uh, you know, hit free throws at, at the right time. So everything in terms of just kind of finding that way to win, as you said, gut it out. Uh, they did that. Well, you have to be able to because the one thing you would think we would all learn by now, but it seems like every year we look at teams that have momentum or teams that you're on a roll until you're not on a roll. And what I mean by that is in the NCAA tournament, it doesn't matter what you did in the regular season. It may help your seeding. It doesn't matter what you did in the conference tournament. It can all come to an end. We've seen that a lot with teams in the SEC. But Alabama's still playing, and one reason they're still playing is, like you said, they have shown the ability to adjust and you know, they're going to have their toughest game this coming Thursday night against North Carolina, but I really believe this team is capable of winning that game, right? Yeah, I look, you know, the funny thing is, is we talked about this last week, and, you know, we, we kind of thought Alabama was going into the tournament on a kind of a down note, but how have they responded all year, you know, when they had kind of had their backs to the wall when maybe they weren't playing really well? They've responded uh, in the right way. I think they've done it in these first two games, Gary, and you talk about momentum. Maybe they carry a little bit, bit of that into this game with North Carolina, maybe more confidence. Yeah, the, you know, Alabama was a team that was, quite frankly, a lot of people were overlooking going to the NCAA tournament. Who are they saying watch for? Watch for Auburn. They're the team that's going to go to the Final Four. Watch for Florida. Watch for Mississippi State's playing their best ball. And even though Tennessee got thumped, uh, a lot of people are still saying, well, Tennessee's the best Final Four team that's built for the Final Four. Nobody was saying much about Alabama, but they're still playing, Rodney, and, and that's the bottom line. And Nate Oates is proving yet again that uh, he is a phenomenal coach. And I said this before the tournament, so I don't want to back off it now, even though I picked Alabama in my bracket to go to the Final Four. Uh, the Herb Jones team, it was a little disappointing when they got knocked out of the Sweet 16. Last year's team, number one overall seed. And this year's team, it'll be disappointing too. But I think when you look at this year's team to make it to the Sweet 16, it's already been a very successful season. Yeah, I mean, what they've had to overcome, we've talked about that. You know, the coaching changes, obviously, you had he turned over his staff. And, and, and then the personnel changes, I think, what a fantastic job they've done. We, we sat there here in December, early December, and really wondered how far this team could go. And now here they are with this opportunity against the number one seed, North Carolina. So uh, they're in really good position. There's some people – I talked to some people, Gary, today that follow it really closely that said, 
you know, watch out. Alabama's got a real shot in this game. Yeah, and they may have to overcome being shorthanded on Thursday night. You know, as your grandmother used to tell you, bless his heart. Uh, <laughs> that's what you just feel like saying for the Trail Reitzel Jr. Excellent player. I think he's Alabama's best three-point shooter. But his status for Thursday night is uncertain. Reitzel, of course, missed four games during the regular season with a concussion. And on Friday night against Charleston, he got knocked in the, in the face and had to, you know, uh, have a – uh, Gauls put in his nose, and he came back out and played, but he didn't practice Saturday. And then this happened on Sunday night. Uh, darting a three-point shot, they landed on each other's foot. He fell down on the floor, hit his head, left the game, did not come back. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Coach Oates said after the game that he felt like Latrell would be able to go, but now they're saying, listen, it's a medical situation. He'll play if he's cleared. Uh, and again, Rod, there's just no other way around it. This is a guy who is an excellent three-point shooter. Quick release has the ability to make them from deep. If he can't go, it's a it's a it's a big detriment for it, Alabama. It really is. And you know, Gary, the streak of injuries. I mean yeah. it's just it's just how odd is that, you know? Same guy, uh, the various injuries that he's had really but someone else has yeah. to step up. I mean that's what it's all about. And you know, you got some players that I think we talked about having more balance in your scoring, I think will be really important against yeah. North Carolina. Grant Nelson needs to come alive. Yeah, he needs to play better, that's for sure. All right, Rod, now it's time for Coach Talk. And Alabama is headed to the Sweet 16 for the third time in the last four years under head coach Nate Oates. And he thinks it's the success uh, the team has enjoyed this year could be because of the strength of schedule that they've played. Alabama has played one of the most challenging schedules in the nation. And they lost a lot of those games, let's be honest. But Coach Oates credits that toughness in schedule to the success the Tide's having in March. I think our non-conference schedule got us ready for this. Four teams in the non-conference are all in the Sweet 16. And, you know, we lost all four, but I thought we got better from it. We lead the country in scoring. We play fast. Our offense has been number one in the country for a large part of the year. But we really try to build the program on toughness, blue collar, and it hasn't been what we'd like to see all the year. It was there tonight. Without it, we don't win tonight. No jump. And Alabama and North Carolina will play Thursday night at 8.39 Central Time, or 8.49 Central Time on CBS at Crypto.com Arena. Of course, R.J. Davis, outstanding for North Carolina. Uh, Armando Baycott is one of those big guys. It's 24 years old. He's been around the block. Hey, listen, they're, they're a great team. And uh, Hubert Davis has done a great job of coaching them. It's not going to be easy. But again, Rod, Alabama uh, isn't going to be intimidated by anybody. You heard the schedule. Uh, they've played four teams in the non-conference in the Sweet 16. Arizona, Purdue, Creighton, and Clemson. Plus, they played Tennessee twice, and they're in the Sweet 16 out of the SEC. So five of the Sweet 16 teams. Now, Alabama hasn't beaten any of them, but they're used to playing this high-level competition. And I think that serves them well. Plus, last season, uh, 20. 223, they beat North Carolina up at the Phil Knight Invitational in Oregon in four overtimes. So uh, Alabama will be, uh, they'll be ready and they won't back down. Yeah. You know, again, I think you look at Armando Baycott inside for North Carolina, Gary. I mean, you got to find an answer for him. He's a big physical guy. I mean, he can really dominate on the boards. He's what, 6'9, 6'10, 240 of it, pounds. Yeah. You know, they, uh, you know, Harrison Ingram's a really talented guy, had 17 points against Michigan State. He's a 6'7 guy that can really shoot it. And then Carmack Ryan, who hurt Alabama mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, transferred from Notre Dame. Playing for Notre Dame, yeah. Yeah, outstanding player. And, of course, obviously, R.J. Davis is, is tremendous. 21 so, points a game. You know, really but, but Alabama's got a guy, too, that North Carolina's going to have to deal with, and that's Mark Sears. He's got 56 points, Rodney, in the first two games. He had 30 against Charleston, 26 against Grand Canyon. Uh, I was talking with Rod Grizzard about him, former Alabama great this morning on my radio show. You know, walking around on the street six feet, six one is pretty tall, but in basketball it's not tall at all. Now, he's got a physical type, strong safety type body, but this is a guy who is just playing incredible basketball. He's a second-team All-American for a reason. He's a superstar. Yeah, he's been phenomenal. Again, like you said, 30 points against Charleston, comes back with 26. I mean, he's just making it happen. And what about Walters dropping those threes? Gary, he's been pretty good hitting those threes from the corner. Uh, but, yeah, you got to find some more balance, though. I mean, he needs some help. Sears needs some help. Yeah, it's going to be a great game on Thursday night. And if Alabama wins it, they will go where – the team from Alabama 20 years ago went, and that's to the Elite Eight. Only one Elite Eight appearance for Alabama in its history, and that was in 2004. Maybe 20 years is the charm, and maybe Alabama will get back there. And then, of course, you're just one step away from the Final Four. All right, Rod, let's move on. The Alabama women's basketball team concluded its season this past Sunday with a tough 65-54 loss. Alabama, the number eight seed, lost to the number one seed, Texas, in Austin. But they played them. This was a close 
game, most of the game. And Alabama played tough. Of course, Sarah Ashley Barker continues to lead the way. She had 17 points. Um, Ali and I and Loyal McLean also scored in double figures. Head coach Christy Curry in the post game talking about how proud she was of, of this group, Rodney. And she said that, listen, you know, it's about playing basketball, but it's also a, you know, it's a journey when you with a team. They won 24 games, and Coach Curry really proud of this group, not only for the on the court success, but you know the way they represented the university off the court. Yeah, absolutely. You know, 24 wins, like you said, Gary. What a phenomenal season they've had, and to go to Austin and play Texas like they did. I mean, it's disappointing to lose, obviously. Texas is a great, great team, and to be able to go into Austin and play them and very respect, respectably, that's a. Uh, that shows you how far the program's come. Yeah, they're uh, they're in pretty good shape. All right, still to come on Tider Insider Television, Alabama is cleaning up on the recruiting trail. Rodney will have the latest on the commitments that have come in in the last week. Meanwhile, the current roster, of course, also working hard for this season to get ready for 2024. Uh, we're just a couple of weeks out from 8A. We'll have an update from Alabama football. And also, we'll be getting your phone calls, emails, and tweets. As always, that phone number, 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-988. Too. You can email us, TITV at WVUA23.com. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. The award-winning Tider Insider Television will return after this break. Alabama holding spring practice number seven this afternoon. Uh, they were inside the Hank Chris indoor facility. Doesn't mean they didn't go outside, but when the photo uh, photos were being taken by the UA uh, photo staff, they were inside. This is uh, the final practice before Alabama holds its first scrimmage of the spring on Thursday inside Bryant-Denny Stadium. Alabama offensive players and coaches met with the media this afternoon as well, so I'm going to have some of their comments for you coming up tonight on WVUA 23 News at 10. Of course, Rodney's going to have some of them for you at TiderInsider.com. All right, Rodney, let's uh, uh, well, welcome, we welcome you back into TITV, sponsored by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. With Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. We talked about this yesterday on my radio show. Um, Nick Saban is arguably the best to ever do it. So when I say this, it's got, I mean, you're just coming off of one of the greatest runs in college football history. But there's a lot of excitement surrounding this program right now. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of juice, as the players call it. A lot of enthusiasm, Rod. And I think that has to do with the fact that Coach DeBoer has come in here with his own personality, his own style, a winning resume. His resume is pretty impressive, too. And I think the feeling among these players is, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different, but we're not going anywhere. We're going we're gonna to keep rolling as far as that playing at a championship level. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you hit on a lot of really key points about his enthusiasm, his energy, the vibe they have now around the program. And again, I, I think, look, it's it, like you said, it's been great with Coach Saban. Uh, he, it, but, but when you're moving forward like this, Gary, you've got a team with a lot of great players. Uh, you bring in that energy. You bring in that enthusiasm. You bring in a new outlook. But also, I think they still have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder from what happened last year, the way the season ended, because Alabama felt like they were a really hot football team going into the, the Rose Bowl, the playoffs against Michigan. They lose that game. So I think this team, they've got a lot of combinations of some really good ingredients that I think are going to give them an opportunity to be an outstanding team. I know you're really high on the defensive line, and uh, you got a little piece out on, on Tyler and Sutter right now talking about uh, uh, the numbers, um, the athleticism. I mean, if you're not good up front on defense in this league, it's hard to be good on defense, period. But it looks like Alabama under Freddie Roach has got a good group. I think they have a real good group. I mean, when you're talking about on the hoof, they're as impressive as any I've seen here in a while. There you see Tim Smith and Tim Keenan going up against each other. There's a lot of veterans. There's some really young guys where you're talking about James Smith, Edric Hill, Jordan Renaud, players like that are outstanding young players that I think are going to bring a lot. I think numbers-wise, depth-wise, talent-wise, they've got a lot of potential. And a lot of people do, Gary, ask about how's Keon Keeley making that transition mm -hmm. from outside linebacker to that defensive end spot. I spoke to someone last week, source connected the staff, said, listen, when this guy learns it, he's going to be a terror. So, again, I, I think when you look at all the numbers and what they have, Gary, uh, Freddie Roach has a great unit. And real quick, uh, what you've seen from the offense so far. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at it, Gary, obviously you've got your leader back. You've got Jalen Milrow, a guy that's got a lot of experience. When you're talking about a quarterback that has that kind of experience, it's really valuable, but not just him in that quarterback room. I mean, I think Ty Simpson's a fantastic prospect. Dylan Lonergan, of course, Austin Mack transferred in. You've got a really good wide receiver core. I think with Caden Proctor, as we expect now, coming back, it's going to be an offensive line that I think has a chance to be really, really good. So, I, look, I, I think Alabama, like I said, I think they have the ingredients to be really good this season. All right, and the ingredients to be really good 
beyond this season is built in recruiting. And, Rodney, the tide is rolling. Uh, what a week for linebackers. Let's start with the most recent on Sunday. Luke Metz, six foot three. 220 pounds out of Mill Creek High School over in um, Georgia. It's near the Buford area. Football hotbed. This is a guy who, I guess he's listed as a three-star, but when you watch him play, you're thinking, man, it's going to be higher than that before it's all said and done. Had 33 Division I offers, and uh, he's kind of an old-school throwback type of linebacker in that he will stick his head in there yeah. and pop you. He's a thumper. What do you call him, Gary? Hard nosed? Yeah, he's hard nosed. <laughs> and he is yeah, a thumper. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's but you know, but don't overlook his athleticism. No, no, look at that right there. Yeah, he's a nice player. I mean, look, he could play multiple positions. You could see him also. I'm not saying he's going to play another position, but he is capable of playing tight end in high school and he's got a lot of ability. All right, and he was the most recent, but two other linebacker commitments last week as well. Let's keep it going with uh, Daryl Duke Johnson and Abdul Sanders. Yeah, I like Duke Johnson from over in Georgia, Eastman, uh, Georgia, Dodge County High School. Gary's rangy guy, about 6'1", 205 pounds or so. He, he plays linebacker. They have him rated one of the top five linebackers in the country, but when you watch him, you could see a lot of things. that He could play safety. There, I think that's Abdul Sanders' highlights right there, if I'm not well, mistaken. Well, they're similar type players. Yeah, they are very and uh, Sanders from Modern Day High School yeah. Powerhouse in California. Yeah. And look at him. Watch him on this tape. I, I don't know what all we've got here, but there you see a pick six. He had several uh, this past season. He's a high-quality player. So look at that. Breaks up another one. Uh, very instinctive. Very, very instinctive player. So I think so far what we're seeing from Kalen DeBoer's recruiting, uh, getting a lot of really good players with a ton of versatility. Yeah, and these three linebackers, uh, very important. If you call it a 4-2-5, of course all these, these defenses are multi, you know, now. But uh, you got to have guys that can run cover and get after the quarterback and all three of those guys have the potential to do that all right still to come on TITV Alabama Gymnastics is headed to uh, NCAA Regional up in Ann Arbor Michigan and we'll have the latest plus we'll be getting your phone calls in the next segment 205-348-9882 that's 205-348-9882 go ahead and give us a ring now so you can get through we want to hear from you Tider Insider Nation this is TITV The number eight Alabama gymnastics team, fresh off a second place finish at the SEC Championships in New Orleans over the weekend, will travel to Ann Arbor, Michigan for the 2024 NCAA Regional Championships on Thursday, April 4th. Alabama is the number two seed in the regional with number one Oklahoma as the top seed. Alabama will compete in the first semifinal session against number nine Michigan, the host Kent State and Penn State. The Crimson Tide begins the competition on the vault, rotating to the uneven bars and the balance beam before finishing up on the floor exercise. Welcome back into TITV with Rodney Orr. I'm Gary Harris. Time to jump out on the phones. Tommy over in Romulus is going to lead us off. Hey, Tommy. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Gary? Doing well. Good to hear from you, man. All right. My question is, what are we looking for in the transfer portal in the offensive line? Are we going to go that route, or do we have enough talent? I heard he made a comment that he's looking for more offensive line. Yeah, Tommy, I think Coach DeBoer feels like, even with Caden Proctor coming in, that they still might be a little short on numbers. So, yeah, I think they will look in the, the portal. But let's be clear on this, Rodney. They're not going to take just anybody just to fill out a, a roster no, spot. Right. They're looking for guys that can come in and be good enough to play in the program. Yeah, I think they have 13 on scholarship right now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, going through spring practice. I think, Tommy, you know, you'd like to have that up 16, 17, maybe, uh, maybe even 18 if you could, if you could do it. But, uh, yeah, you, you probably need some more numbers. If the right guys come available in the in, in the offensive line in the portal. I certainly would expect them to to go after them. Yeah, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. And and listen, that portal at Alabama, I don't think it's going to be a lot different than was under Saban. They're going to look to use the portal, but make sure they get guys that are are quality players. All right, let's talk to Steve over in Trussell. Hey, Steve. Hey guys, how y'all doing tonight? Doing well. Uh, first of all, I just want to let you know how much I enjoyed the show. Um, my question revolves the uh, Caden Proctor transfer back to Alabama. From what I hear from some friends of mine up in Iowa, he was uh, given quite a bit of money in uh, NIL to come up there. And uh, he, from what I gather, he has no plans of uh, paying them back. And if that's the case, is that the, really the kind of person that we won't represent in Alabama playing football for? All right, Steve, I understand your concerns, but that's the that's the lay of the land. If there's no contract, you know, all these young men, are, if they can get money, they're taking it. Um, listen, 
Iowa contacted him when he was still at Alabama. They offered some money to get him back. If he took their money and decided he wouldn't come back to Alabama, that's just the way the ball rolls, in my opinion. I, I don't know that that reflects on his character at all. Well, and, and he did some promotions. Yeah. I mean, he did, he did promotions at him, yeah. Iowa. I mean, they paid him, but, yeah, he had some promotions, and, and uh, he got paid for those. So, uh, you know, but look, I, I mean, here, here's the thing, Gary. Like you said, Iowa basically recruited him to come back home. That's really what happened. Nick Saban saved him before he left, and then when Nick Saban stepped down, Caden decided to go back home, and then he got up there, he realized, hey, you know what? I had a great thing at Alabama. There's really not a lot of comparison between the two programs. I'm going back to Alabama. So right. he was going back either way. All right, we'll be back after this. All right, it's time for our email question of the day. And our email question of the day is brought to you by KDM Service Corporation. When it comes to heating and air conditioning, KDM Service Corporation serves your family like our family. It's Scott Cochran coming back to Alabama. That's from Ty Northport. Certainly making the rounds. He was in town over the weekend to visit his in-laws uh, and some friends of his at Alabama. I, I would never rule it out down the road, Rodney, but right for right now, no. He's, yeah, he's not coming back. I think back. he summed it up perfectly. All right, let's try to get it. We're going to try to get a phone call in real quick. All right, let's try to go to David in Northport. David, real quickly. Hey guys, hey. Uh, I, no I noticed that uh, uh, the Grand Canyon players were allowed to wear NBA jersey numbers when uh, n I've never seen an Alabama player wearing a number 26 or 58 or whatever. Yeah, but why were they allowed to wear those jersey numbers and we can't? There's a lot of people talking about that, David. I don't know the answer. I don't either. I'll, yeah. You know, I guess I should have because I saw some people on TyronInsider.com talking about it. I'll try to find out. Uh, David, if I can, I'll pass along next week, but I don't know the answer right now. All right, we are smack out of time for the show. Uh, thanks for watching Tighter Insider TV. Our replay comes to wait uh, tonight at 1030, or you can catch it anytime at WVUA23.com. Oh, we got to come back and wrap it up after this. I'm sorry. <laughs> going to come back and do it after this. Ronnie, I tried to close this out a little early because uh, – <laughs> You know, we were short on time, but we got enough to come back and say good night. And uh, appreciate you watching. We'll be back next uh, week with another edition of TITV, and we'll try to check on those Grand Canyon jersey numbers. For Rodney, where I'm Gary Harris. Good night, everybody.